So I gotta say, I'm quite disappointed because uh, this year there's no free fall or projectile that we need to define. <laughs> you know, just like um, we expect in the previous years, we always had one between free fall and projectile. Uh, but anyway, stories, let's take a look. So ball A is thrown vertically upwards at 12 meters per second from the top of the building. Two seconds after ball A was thrown upwards, ball B is thrown vertically downwards at 5.4 meters per second from the top of the same building. Both balls A and B strike the ground at the same time, T seconds. Ignore the effects of F friction like we always do. And then we're given the position time graph for the two balls. Right. So the first question, 3.1.1, we are supposed to use in equations of motion only, calculate the value of each of the following as shown in the diagrams. And then 3.1.1, we are looking for the time t. So t is the time at which the two balls strike the ground, right? So let me just see the mark allocation. It's five, so it seems like we might need to do a bit of work there. So if I concentrate on ball A, we have an initial velocity. I always take up as positive. So the initial velocity is going to be 12, which is positive. The acceleration is minus 9.8. And then I'm looking for time t, right? It seems like that is all I have as far as ball A is concerned. That is all I have. So with three variables, uh, with two variables, I'm not going to be able to calculate the time. I need three so that I can pick an equation. And then the unknown will be the fourth. Okay, let me try the second ball, ball B. It is thrown downwards at a velocity of 5.4 meters per second. The acceleration minus 9.8. We are looking for time t. So there we go again. We don't have enough variables, but we have two balls. Can we work simultaneously? Can we use ball A and ball B in order to find our time t? Let's give it a try. So if we focus on ball A, First, um, so which equation do we want to use? We want to use an equation that involves delta y. Why am I using delta y? Why am I choosing to take delta y as the fourth variable? Because they are thrown from the same height. So at time t, when they strike the ground, they have the same displacement, right? So for ball A, delta y is equal to vi delta t plus a half acceleration delta t squared. So VI is 12, time is what you're interested in, plus a half minus 9.8, let's say T squared. So delta Y will be equals to 12T minus 4.9 T squared. This is as far as ball A is concerned. What about ball B? When we go to ball B, delta Y is going to be equals to minus 5.4 t right and then plus a half minus 9.8 i know that he's going to give me minus 4.9 but i'm just uh, choosing to write it as it is because i don't want to go to the answer without substituting because i'll lose marks well i'm not going to lose marks but if you do it you lose marks in the exam but anyway stories so ball b was thrown two seconds after ball b was thrown so actually the time t for ball b should not be t so if you made that mistake you don't get the answer, right? The time t for ball b is actually t minus 2 because it was thrown two seconds later and then it strikes the ground at the same time with ball a. So don't make that mistake. If you make that mistake, then you don't get the answer. I'm sure somebody did make that mistake. And then plus a half acceleration minus 9.8, right? So here we are also going to have t minus 2 squared. This is because it was thrown two seconds uh, after ball A was thrown. So delta Y is going to be minus 5.5 T plus 10.8. Let me just verify because in the exam, you will substitute 2 multiplied by 2 in the calculator because you don't want to make any mistake. So this is 10.8 and then minus 4.9 and then we have T minus 2 squared, right? So that is going to be T squared minus 4 T plus 4. Yeah. Uh, if you don't see why that is the way it is, you probably got the question wrong either way. <laughs> okay, delta y will be equal to minus 5.4t plus 10.8 minus 4.9t squared. So 
multiplied by 4. So this is plus 19.6 T, right? And then, and then what? Minus 4.9 multiplied by 4 again. So plus 19.6 T. Is it plus? No, it is minus because we have minus multiplied by plus. So we have minus. So let's just verify here because it seems like there's a lot going on. This is fine. This is fine. T squared minus 4T plus 4. This is fine. Minus 4T squared is fine. Plus 16T is fine. And then here we're supposed to have minus 19.6, not minus 19.6T. So, okay, that was another mistake. Yeah, it's always important to verify. So, data Y, so let's add the like terms. So, minus 5.4 plus 19.6, right? Um, that gives me 14.2. So, we have 14.2T. And then 10.8 minus 19.6 minus 8.8. .8. So minus 8.8 .8, and then minus 4.9 T squared. It does not have a like term, so minus 4.9 T squared. So we can equate these two things, these and these. We can equate those because they are both equals to delta Y. So 12 T minus 4.9 T squared is equals to minus 4.9 T squared plus 14.2 t minus 8.8 .8. um okay let me just verify yeah this is fine 12 t minus 4.9 t squared okay that is fine so obviously we have minus 4.9 t squared plus 4.9 t squared right so we can just drop that so we're left with 12 t is equals to 14.2 t minus 8.8 .8. Okay, so 12 minus 14.2, I'm getting 12 minus 14.2, I'm getting minus 2.2. So minus 2.2 T is equal to minus 8.8. .8. So T is equal to. So 8.8 .8 divided by 2.2, I'm getting, what do I get? 8.8 .8 divided by 2.2, I'm getting 4. So time t is four seconds so this takes four seconds okay um there we go there we go uh that is 3.1.1 it's a lot of work to be honest it's a lot of work to be honest yeah 3.1.1 it's a lot of work uh what about 3.1.2 we are looking for the value of z so z is the height from which the two balls were projected right so we how many marks three uh not sure it's worth three marks okay but either way delta y is equal to we can take one between the two equations let's take 12 t minus 4.9 t squared right and then we know that t is equal to 4 when the two balls start at the ground so when we substitute here we shall get delta y which is z so 12 multiplied by 4 minus 4.9 multiplied by 4 squared is equal to so 12 multiply by 4 minus 4.9 multiply by 4 squared this is minus 30.4 so z is equal to 30.4 right it is in meters right but z is just going to be 30.4 yeah because the meters is here in position right on the brackets there but yeah uh, the two balls are projected 30.4 meters above the ground okay what about 3.1.3 we are looking for the value of y so y is the maximum height reached by a right so if i still remember a the initial velocity is 12 the acceleration is minus 9.8 uh, maximum height we know that vf is equal to zero right and then we are looking for delta y right so let's do that vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta y so we have zero squared being equals to 12 squared plus 2 minus 9.8 delta y so delta y is equals to minus 12 squared divided by minus well 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 right so delta y is equals to so 12 squared divided by 19.6 uh, this is 7.35 meters 
right but y is not going to be 7.35 meters right y is going to be equals to 30.4 plus 7.35 i know we just lost some people there we just lost some people i know somebody didn't add the two numbers um so y is equals to 37.75 meters so there we go that is the value of y and then 3.2 we are supposed to on the same set of axis sketch the velocity time graphs for ball a and b while they're in free fall okay so let's do that well let's have our axis first right that's v that's t so t in seconds v in meters per second so the initial velocity of ball b is 12 so 12 i'm taking up as positive and that of b is minus 5.4 right uh we know that the time t yeah we can just put it <laughs> put it as t but we know for the world that it is uh, four seconds okay and then the second ball is projected two seconds after right b is projected two seconds after so here we have ball a ball a starts there and then ball b will start somewhere here which is two seconds after so what happens to ball A? Uh, ball A reaches maximum height after some time. And then it goes on to uh, strike the ground at time T. Yeah, which is somewhere there. Um, and then what? Let me just draw a straight line here. Let me just draw a straight line here. Um, on the same set of axis. Okay, the question says sketch. So I wanted to ask if you had a graph paper, but... I, didn't, I don't think you had okay so i'm putting those dotted lines there so that i can be as accurate as i can be right so that is for ball b and then uh for ball a rather ball b is projected downwards so it starts here and then um stops at time t so you're supposed to have something like this as far as the velocity time graph is concerned so there we go